Okay, so this is the topic two for our PMLS. So this is the overview of the clinical laboratory. So the learning outcomes are enumerate the different general education and professional courses included in the BSMP or BSMLS profession. Discuss the importance of general education courses in the development of medical technologies and discuss the basic concepts of outcomes-based education. So, um, we discuss first uh, where most of medical technologists work, works. They okay? are, yeah, most. Okay, so that is the clinical laboratory. So, we have here, when say clinical laboratory, it is where the test, Clinical laboratory tests are conducted, um, which is headed by a pathologist. Okay, so we have here the legal basis for this one is that we have the RA number 4688, which is known as the Clinical Laboratory Act of 1966. This is an act regulating the operation and maintenance of clinical laboratories and requiring the registration of the same with the Department of Health providing penalty for the violation thereof and for other purposes. So what is the importance of clinical laboratory law? Of course, this is to safeguard the general public against malpractice, negligence, and it sets a minimum standards for uh, clinical laboratories. Okay, so it will, uh, it, it is indicated, okay, in the law of, uh, in our law, if um, what is the minimum size for primary, secondary, or tertiary laboratory is, as well as the minimum, uh, what they call this one, minimum required reagents and equipment that is needed for the types of clinical laboratory. And of course, the number, it determines also the minimum number of medical technologists working in that particular lab laboratory. Kumbaga, it sets standards, okay, that must be followed for a clinical laboratory to be licensed to protect the welfare of the general public, of course, okay, so that um, uh, what these clinical, uh, clinical laboratories provide is of a standard level of test, okay, hindi yung pucho puchong test lang. It's because there is a law that can, that, uh, that can penalize them, that gives penalties, that sets standards. So, yun naman actually yung mga purpose ng laws natin, okay. So, another is DOH Administrative Order Number 2007-0027. It contains the revised rules and regulations governing the licensure and regulation of clinical laboratories in our country. Okay, kumbaga, it contains yung mga revised rules and regulations uh, of the RA4688. Because this RA4688 is so obsolete, masyado na siyang matanda. Okay, it's so old that is no longer appropriate for the conditions that we have today with the advent of um, modern technology. And actually, there's a new one. Okay, so I inserted the new one. So this is um, the newest, okay, revised rules and regulations for governing, uh, for the, uh, what do you call this one? Rules and regulations governing the regula uh, regulation of clinical laboratories in our country. So, ito na yung pinakabago. Okay? In primary laboratories, it requires actually a minimum of five medical technologies na. Okay? So, when you say clinical laboratory, this is a facility where tests are done on specimens from human body to obtain information about the health status of a patient for the prevention, diagnosis, and treatment of diseases. Kung baga, it talks about the facility where we conduct our test, okay? So, other functions for clinical laboratory, consultative advisory services covering all aspects of laboratory investigations, including the interpretation of results, and advices on further appropriate investigation. But do take note that we are not responsible for the interpretation of results, okay? Um, although... Yeah, yes pala, yes. We can interpret laboratory results, but we do not make the diagnosis. And can we give advices and further appropriate investigations? Yes. Okay, sometimes there are notes in, what do you call this one? Uh, in our laboratory test report that uh, to confirm, or yes, to confirm the laboratory diagnosis, it is recommended to do further testing, particularly mga confirmatory tests. Okay, so we do those naman. 
Okay, especially some doctors also asked for advice, ano nang gagawin, what to do next to to increase the reliability of the test result. Okay? So, may also be involved in pre-analytical processes such as collection. Okay, so when we say kasi pre-analytical processes, these are the procedures that we do before the actual testing. Okay, like for example, labeling of the sample, transportation of sample, collecting the sample from the patient. Those are activities under pre-analytical. Pag sinabi naman nating analytical, it is during the testing of the sample already. Okay, so... And post-analytical, usually after na, after na ng um, analysis or after na ng testing. Okay, like for example, yung mga reporting of the specimen, mga ganyan, uh, giving this, the results to the different wards in the laboratory, mga ganyan. Okay, so we move to the testing process. So, um, eto na yung sinasabi ko, the pre-analytical, analytical, and post-analytical. So, the pre-analytic testing phase occurs... So, in the laboratory process. So, kasama dyan yung specimen handling issues, okay? May nawalang sample, ganyan, may napagpalit na sample. Basta before the actual testing, okay? That is in, under the pre-analytical phase, okay? So, your examples ko are errors committed in the pre-analytical, okay? So, important occur errors can occur during the pre-analytical phase with specimen handling and identification. There were also cases na um, mislabeling parehong patient, for example, Abigail, dalawang patient Abigail, when in fact magkapatid pala sila, okay? Or dalawang Mrs. Reyes, but uh, the thing is mag-asawa pala silang nakuhanan. Mga ganun bagay. Therefore, the pre-analytical phase must have rigorous control measures to avoid unwittingly allowing problems or errors to travel further downstream, okay? So, on the analytical phase naman, this is the second phase. This phase includes what is usually considered as the actual. So, yun na yung sinasabi ko that um, it is where the laboratory testing really happens. Like, for example, when um, analyzing the urine under your urinalysis. So, the time that you are already analyzing or checking the urine under the microscope, that is the analytical phase. Pero yung mga pre-analytical, for example, ilalagay mo pa lang yung specimen in the tube, centrifuge the sample. So, those are under pre-analytical. And on the other hand, we have here the post-analytical. The post-analytical phase is the final phase. It culminates in the production of the final value result or in case of histology, a diagnostic pathology report. So, after the actual testing, we have the and post-analytical. Kaya nga siya post, meaning after, unlike the pre, before analytical phase. So, we have here the different testing phases. So, if there's clinical need, ordering, collection, transport, okay? So, those are under pre-analysis. But, if you load the sample on the analyzer, okay, on the analyzer already, that is considered as the analytical phase na siya. So, mixing, incubate, um, reduce data, produce result, review result, repeat the test if necessary, release the result. These are under the analytical phase. Okay? So, the actual testing na. So, dito kapag nag-order pa lang si physician, okay, that is under pre-analytical. Okay? So, under pre-analytical. And then, the post naman is when you recap the tube, post-processing storage, okay, report result, access result, okay. So, this one is the difference between the release Release result is releasing from the machines, mga ganyan. But when it comes to reporting of the test result to the physician or giving the test result to the sample or to the patient, that is already under the post-analytical phase. Okay, so clinical action integrate with other clinical info that is under post-analysis. So I hope, guys, that you can that you are able to differentiate. Okay. The, the different activities that we do under pre-analytical and then the post-analytical. Okay, it's very simple naman. Before testing, that is pre-analytical, anything that you do, but the time that you put the sample on the machine or you put them in the microscope, that is already under analytical phase. Okay, so as you can see here, the green one, this is the role of the physician. 
clinical need, yung requisition order, collect. Depending, this one depends on the type of specimen. Usually for phlebotomy, of course, it's us, medical technologists. Pero pag mga CSF, lumbar puncture, these are done by the doctor. Okay, yung mga lumbar puncture, hindi tayo ang gumagawa nun. Okay, and as you can see in the testing process, majority are done by the laboratory workers. Medical technologists, medical laboratory technicians, and others of lobotomies, ganyan. Those who works in the laboratory. Because in reality, ito naman talaga yung ginagawa natin. And back to the clinician for the um, result interpretation. Okay? So, for the diagnosis na to. Diagnosis. Ano yung sinasabi ko kaninang um, possible interpretation of the, the laboratory? Like, for example, nakikita ka ng eggs, parasitic eggs. You will report that. You will interpret that. Or, yes, you will... Um, report that as what? Uh, presence of charicha, trichomonas, ascaris, and others. Okay? As well as in the microbiology or bacteriology section. Okay? Nagkantak ka ng biochemical test. Okay? So, i-interpret mo kung ano yung resulta. Okay? And then you will check if saan ba siya nagmatch ng bacteria. Okay? So, we have here the technology total laboratory automation. Yes? Possible na siya total laboratory automation for this part. Okay? However, not all. It depends on the section. Okay? So, we have here analytical work cell. This one. Um, the analyzer. Loading in the analyzer. And this one is the pre-analytical work cell. So, you are working with the sample. Okay? So, yan yun. Pero ito yung sa important dito. You, you should be able to differentiate it. Um, if in what testing phase is the procedure done, okay? So, we have here the mobile clinical laboratory. So, what we usually know is that a clinical laboratory is within the premises of hospital, diba? but it doesn't end there. Hindi naman siya limited sa ganun. There are different types of clinical laboratory for them. And there's a physician, as a physician's clinic, but as a clinical lab, for them, it's freestanding. Okay, so when you say pre-standing, wala siya sa loob ng institution, wala siya sa loob ng hospitals. Okay, so it caters to different laboratories. Okay, so ano ba yung mga, marami, may marami example uh, here. So, sino ba yung mga nagkikater dito? Best diagnostics sa harap ng CBMC, wala silang hospital, but they cater samples. Okay. When you say mobile clinical laboratory from the term mobile, it is moving. Okay? Kasi nasa loob siya, usually na mga vehicle. So, what is the purpose of this one? This is utilized pag mga annual physical examination. Okay? Mga APEs, annual physical exam ng mga companies. So, yung mga big institution and companies like the University of St. Louis, we do have annual physical examination. So, magpapatest kami, magpapacheck, um, physical exam, if we are fit to work. Okay? So, yun. Kaya, sometimes yung mga companies, instead of their employees going to the different clinical laboratories, sila yun na yung mag-hire yung different mobile laboratories to go in the workplace. Okay? So, this mobile clinical laboratory moves from testing site to another testing site. So, another is the satellite testing site. Any testing site that performs laboratory examination. Okay? So, under the administrative control of a licensed laboratory, but perform outside the physical confines of that laboratory. So, to give you an example of this one, for example, um, this is just an example. For example lang ha, but it is not a reality. For example, si CBMC, di ba ang main hospital niya is uh, Sakari. Kunwari, meron siyang clinical laboratory sa plaza. Okay? So, that is a satellite testing site of CBMC. Okay? Another is, example, screening of hemoglobin and blood typing during bloodletting activities. Okay? So, another is, um, what do you call this one? 
Another example ng satellite testing site is, for example, sa CBMC went on a blood donation in the University of St. Louis. And during the blood donation, nag-conduct sila ng test for hemoglobin and blood typing in the university. So that is also termed as satellite testing site. Okay? So sa physician's office laboratory naman, so I don't know if you have encountered one, but usually mga physician's clinic kasi di ba, they have their own clinical laboratory wherein they only test mga basic tests like CBC, hemoglobin, okay? So mga ganun. Kaya siya physician's office lab. Individual's doctor office or clinic wherein laboratory examinations are performed. Ano yung mga examples natin dito around er our area? Lutheran Clinic, Trimedica Diagnostic, and Immaculate Conception. Okay? When you say point of care testing naman, this testing is done on patient bedside. Okay? Sa tabi ng pasyente. Okay? Like, yung mga small aut automated um, equipment like yung glucometer for measuring the glucose level that is performed in the bedside of the patient, okay? So, example, monitoring of glucose of a diabetic patient using a glucometer. Another is, we have here yung National Reference Laboratory or NRL. Okay. Um, this is a government hospital which has been designed by the DOH to provide special functions only. Okay. And services for specific disease areas. It may or may not be a part of a general clinical laboratory. So, what are the functions of the NRL? So, Provision of referral services such as confirmatory testing, surveillance, resolution of conflicting results between or among laboratories. So, it means kasi when you say confirmatory testing, it establishes okay, the um, accuracy and reliability of the test result. So, ito kasi is to kumbaga, increase accuracy and reliability ng ating test result. Like for example, si HIV. What we do in um, a primary or secondary laboratory or tertiary is that we only do the screening test, okay? So, to establish that the patient is really positive for the HIV virus, uh, as medical technologists, we should send the samples to the confirmatory laboratory para talaga ma-determine okay, kung may HIV siya. Another is yung sa drug testing. What we do only is um, in mga primary, secondary, tertiary, yung mga hindi NRL, is that we only do the screening test. If they are positive for the drug of abuse, okay, their samples are sent in the confirmatory laboratory, okay, to determine, to establish talaga that a person is really a drug user, okay? So, another is this NRL, they also provide trainings. Okay, like for example, di ba, paulit-ulit kong sinasabi yung sa drug testing, uh, a fresh graduate without um, a training for this one, for DT, drug testing, must undergo first training for DT before performing such test. Kahit yung confirmatory test lang, dapat merong training. Okay, another ish, is, is, Research and the implementation of EQUAS, External Quality Assurance. Okay? So, sa EQUAS kasi, samples are sent to the different clinical laboratories and the different laboratories will determine uh, if the sample has parasite, to determine for chemistry test. Kumbaga, it is an assessment program. Okay? To determine, to compare yung resulta na nakukuha ng mga laboratory with that of the true value. Okay? For example, nagpadila sila ng specimen for parasitology. Meron yung Ascaris, Marjarja, mga ganyan. Dapat, si laboratory is, it should be able, yung mga medical technologists should be able to determine what are the parasites that are present in that specimen. Okay? And that is graded. Okay, para pumasa sila. So, yun yung purpose ng EQUAS. As well as evaluation of diagnostic kits and reagent 
So we have here the different NRLs, East Avenue Medical Center. So this is the Confirmatory Laboratory for Environmental and Occupational Health, Toxicology, and Micronutrient Assay. So for yung mga drug of abuse, the EAMC serves as the Confirmatory Laboratory. Okay, siya yung NRL for drug of abuse. NKTI naman, that is for hematology including blood banking. So, kapag may mga um, test under hematology that needs confirmation, dito ipapadala sa NKTI. Okay? Even for blood banking, mga blood banking procedures. Okay? Dito din sa NKTI. San Lazaro Hospital naman, okay, HIV, AIDS, hepatitis, and STD. So, if there are samples that needs to be confirmed for the presence of HIV, hepatitis, and STDs, okay, mga syphilis, okay, sexually transmitted, hepatitis B. Okay, this must be sent sa San Lazaro. Pag mga anatomic pathology and biochemistry naman sa lung center, RITM kapag mga bacteria, okay, as well as other viruses that are not considered as STDs. Okay, pag mga STD, San Lazaro. Okay, viral and bacterial infection, sa RITM, dengue, influenza, TB, malaria, and other parasites. Okay? So, as long as um, bacteria siya, virus siya, fungi, that needs to be confirmed sa RITM, ipapadala. Okay? Sa RITM. Routine test, so usually, these are done in uh, clinical laboratories na. What are examples ng routine test? Glucose, lipid profile, um, renal function test, liver function test, AST, ALT. Pag mga renal naman, it assess yung uh, capability ni kidney like BUN, creatinine. So, si lipid profile naman, so actually it should be 5, cholesterol, triglyceride, HDL, LDL, and CDL, DL. Okay. Another type of test is the STAT test. When we say STAT, urgent. It must be done immediately, regardless of how many samples you have. So, pag mga STAT tests, usually saan sila nanggagaling sa ER, emergency cases. Okay? So, usually, ang most common in the lab na STAT test is the troponin test. Why? Because the troponin assess for the presence of cardiac arrest. Okay, so stat yung mga yun. Even if you have 1,000 samples in your table, if a troponin test arrives and it has a label of stat, it should be processed first. Okay, it's not first come first serve basis. Okay, pag may mga stat test. Okay, so we have here um, this one, the new rules and regulations governing the clinical laboratories. So, the purpose of this one is to regulate the operation and maintenance of clinical laboratories and requiring the registration of the same with the DOH, it provides penalties for violations. Okay? But uh, we will not discuss this uh, detail by detail because it will be covered under our NPLB. Okay? So, um, the important thing under this one is yung specific guidelines, yung classification of clinical laboratories, so, it can be classified based on ownership. It should, it can be um, government-owned or private. Of course, uh, from the term alone, malalaman nyo na. Like, for example, CBMC, that is government-owned. Private, St. Paul, Divine. Okay? Uh, what else? How about PGH? Philippine General Hospital. Government, diba? St. Luke's, Global private. Okay? So, it has something to do with if who owns it. Is it an institution, corporation, or the government? Another is classification by institutional character. Okay? So, here is institution-based and non-institution-based. Pag sinabi natin it is institution-based, that is located within the premises and operates as part of the DOH licensed health facility. Parang uh, within hospital vicinity siya. Okay, under hospital vicinity, like yung clinical laboratory ng St. Paul, CBMC, 
university. So, that is institution-based. Pero pag mga non-institution, a laboratory that oper- operates independently and is not attached to any DOH licensed health facility. So, para siyang freestanding. Wala siya sa loob ng hospital. Okay? It is not attached to any DOH licensed health facility, pero it should be licensed by the DOH. Okay, yung mga freestanding, these are, this must be licensed by the DOH, even yung mga institution-based. Iba yung license ng hospital, iba din yung license ng laboratory. Okay? Classification by function, we have here clinical, anatomic, and molecular pathology. Pag clinical pathology, it deals with chemical cellular analysis of blood and other body fluids. Kagaya ng under clinical chemistry, CM, toxicology, TDM or therapeutic drug monitoring, IS, immunology and serology, hematology and coagulation, as well as yung microbiology. Pero kapag anatomic naman siya, take note nyo lang yung sa word ng anatomy, it is more of tissues. Okay? Microscopic structure ng tissues. Surgical pathology, cytopathology, immunohistochemical techniques, autopsies, forensic technology. Yung concern niya, anatomic pathology has something to do with changes that happens with the tissues. Okay? Pag clinical pathology, more on testing ng samples. Okay? Pag molecular pathology naman, analysis of certain genes, proteins, kaya nga siya molecular molecular level of the cell. Like, for example, a good example of this one nowadays is the uh, RT-PCR for COVID testing. So, under yun ng molecular pathology. Another classification by service capability is yung a clinical laboratory for clinical and anatomic pathology. It provides services for all tests. Okay? Pero another classification is if it is for anatomic pathology only. If that is a clinical laboratory for anatomic pathology, it only caters test under anatomic pathology. Pero kapag clinical laboratory for molecular pathology, it only provides test for molecular pathology. Okay? So, yun yung coverage ng ating lesson 2. So, if you have questions, feel free to send me a message in my messenger. Thank you.